In this video, I'll be doing a review of JU Linux, the Emergency Tactical Prepper Edition. And to do an impression of the guy on the open office icon there, it's a case of why? <laughs> this is not a good distro at all. Well, it's over three gig to download, and they seem to have gone for the idea of let's install every application in the hope that it might be the one someone wants which goes to the opposite idea of it's now bloody confusing to use and it takes ages to do an update. And looking at the website here. Hmm. Good advice is not to talk negatively about other systems or what they're using, but to talk positively about the benefits of using a simple system. Oh dear. Um, this could be a bit difficult to do this review. Oh, no way. It's not a simple system. So maybe I might get away with uh, being very negative about it. Although, trying to be negative in a truthful, constructive manner, that's what I try and do here. But we offer a full commercial and non-commercial non technical support for JU Linux. $30. <laughs> this is about the last distro I would take commercial support on. As you'll come to see, it's really not that good. It's too complicated, there's too much thrown in there, and just no, 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 no. And surprisingly, it's based on Ubuntu 12.10, and I think there's a reason that not many distros have been based on Ubuntu 12.10. Is this the first one based on 12.10 I've seen? It, I'm thinking it is, I can't think of another one, because most distros take 12.04, which is long-term support edition. Or they take 13.04, which is the current, the current version of Ubuntu. Well, as I mentioned, this distro has an XP theme to it. It, it pretty much does look like XP here. Even the application menu bars, close, minimize, maximize icons all look like XP. The start bar is different though. There's a couple of problems here, that's just where I've resized the screen in VirtualBox. But now I've just mucked it up and I can't go and reboot. That's just my own faults there. I didn't really realize what I was doing and forgot how to install the VirtualBox guest edition drivers. They have added this welcome document on desktop. So just giving thanks to the people who've contributed. Uh, what your expectations of the distro should be. They got some YouTube videos, and I did have a quick look through, and there's a list of the applications that are pre-installed, or a list of the packages that are pre-installed. They've got their own custom control center on here. It's very basic, that's just a list of shortcuts in the user share folder. Hmm. Okay, it's kind of a shortcut way of doing that. Let's go for that help me package. Ah, okay. There's a file missing there. In fact, that just looks like a default opening of Midori, where it goes to the website and that file that's not there. Just open up something else. There are mouse. I've opened that one up at random. The desktop is based on Mate. If we just go across the System Tools and Task Manager, we can see how much it's using in the way of resources. 660 meg. I've had a few things open now, I don't know. It's a bit higher than I would have expected that. There's this temperature monitor that keeps showing up every time on boot up. That is very annoying. Um, I'm sure I could probably just disable that somehow, but I really haven't bothered looking at it. You've got the network connections, volume control, and this force close an application. So, oh, yep, let's try that. It worked. And the calendar is across on the right hand side. Right, looking at the applications that are pre installed, the first few of those I can sort of accept. Clam TK, well, a sort of borderline acceptance of that. But this one, GNU Emacs, what possible use would this have for someone who would want to come across from Windows for the first time? And this one here, QEMU. Why would this be on there? Carrying on, education. There are several programs about for the Bible here. It does seem a very Christian type distro. It's not always wise to put those on here. Yes, be happy of your faith, but not everyone in the world has an acceptance of Christianity. Games, there's several games installed on here. Mostly lightweight games. Yeah, in fact, I think they all are fairly lightweight games. A couple of emulators though, I'm not sure why you'd want those. MAME Arcade Emulator, DOSBox Emulator. Graphics. 
several graphics app packages on here. Um, I could read these out, but there are far too many. I'm just leaving it open for a little while for you to see. Blender. I've seen that in pre-installed on some distros, but not on many. GIMP. Yeah, I'm happy for that to be on there. You can see the application opening time is hmm, a bit below average, perhaps. Libra CAD. Okay, not really an average application, that one. Go get out of here. And carrying on to internet, as you've seen, there are three different web browsers on here. You've got Thunderbird for the email client and Transmission for downloading torrent files. JU Linux Extras is there's a few things over and above the control center in here. I did try these out, the install Netflix desktop on Linux and the update Netflix Silverlight. As you can see, they just run scripts and then close without really reporting back what they've done. Add or remove Windows applications. Well, it's got Play on Linux and Wine on here. It's Wine version 1.4.1. I'm thinking that's a bit out of date, isn't it? Damn, I can't remember. I've not used Wine for a little while. Error, you can't close this window. Oh, yeah, yeah. Play on Linux is mucking around, isn't it? Oh, let's try this false close, shall we? Yeah, false close. Yay! Oh, that's a good application. I like that one now. Anyway, carrying on, we have Office. That's Open Office this time. Do you know, I've never used OpenOffice since LibreOffice came around. But this is when Apache took over from Sun, or Oracle actually, isn't it? Yeah, doesn't look a million miles different from when it was under Sun's ownership. There are probably differences, I've just not looked into it. Sound and video. We've got a few different music players on here. We have Audacious, Banshee, and LX music player. Got a few different video players as well. VLC, M Player, and Totem. There's some DVD ripping programs, sound editor. Oh, there is a video editor as well with OpenShot. System tools. Yep, help yourself on reading that one. I'm not reading all those out. Places, just a shortcut to all the folders. System. Here's what I thought of JU Linux Revision 2. So easy to use. Well, no, not really, because the sheer amount of applications, but also. Windows XP you know, was never really that much of an easy version of Windows to use. But when you compare it to Windows 7, and basing a distro off that on the styling, no, it's not really going to work that. Well, ease of installation, surprisingly it actually was quite easy to install. Styling, dull and boring. Boot up speed, wasn't too bad, it was 15 seconds. Responsiveness, a bit below average for a Linux distro. Number of bugs, total failure here. Uh, it's still got the old problem from Ubuntu 12.10 where it didn't have the Linux headers package, so it, installing any drivers just fails. And also there's some application errors. Selection of pre-installed applications, just an insane number, it just totally wrecks the distro. Number of applications available, they've added a couple of repositories but not really enough for me to give it full marks there. And it did have both the 32 and 64-bit versions. They're in one ISO. I think it uh, installs the particular architecture for your system as and, in, as and when during the install. I've got no good points for it. The bad points. Overall, it does feel like Windows both have a Chinese build quality. In other words, cheap Chinese junk. I've given it 50%. That is the worst distro I've reviewed so far this year. So thanks for watching. See you later.